Today, I thought I would explore the idea of profitable thinking. As I listen to the world out there, I hear, I hear consciousness of lack. And so I thought it would be really, really good if we just explored profitability. What does it mean to be a person who thinks about profit? And so what I've come to understand is that profitable thinking is a mental process where we expand our mind to perceive an ever-increasing image of life experience in all areas of our life. You see, it's a process of thinking. And it's a process of thinking that expands what? An image, our awareness. And it's about our awareness of being able to experience a greater life, a greater way of seeing life, being in life, and it's not just with money, but it's in all areas of our life. It's in our lives, in our relationships, in our lives, in our spirituality, in our lives, in our mental abilities, in our lives, in our money, in our lives, in our job, in our lives, in our social lives. Profitability is always about a greater expansion. It's not just about money. And so a person who really has, embodies the idea of profitable thinking sees a greater vision of all of life, not just one piece of life. Because if you'll notice, as you go around the world and you look at people, you can find people who are very, very, very wealthy. And they could be very, very, very ill. People who are very, very, very wealthy that have the most beautiful homes and everything, and their relationships are horrific. They don't have relationships with their children. There are addictions, drugs, alcohol addictions. Yeah, they've got profitability in the money area, but they don't have profitability in the self-worth area, in the relationship area, in the spiritual connection area, in the health area. So profitability is something that's beyond. It's a mental process of increasing our image about who we are and what we want to experience in life. Prosperity is the freedom to do what we want, when we want, how we want, physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, connectively. Do you see, it's a freedom that goes into all areas of life to be able to do what we want, when we want, and how we want. And here's what I'm going to tell you. If you've studied me for a while, you listen to me for a while, you hear me talk about values all the time. Values are those areas of our lives where we perceive the greatest weakness, the greatest limitation, or it's an area of life where we have a desire to want more. And I learned that each of us has high values, the top five. And we talk about that when we do the values determination process. That is a tool that I learned from Dr. John Demartini. It's been one of the most valuable tools that I've learned in my journey as a teacher. But what I've come to understand is that if you don't know what you really are, what you really value, I can tell you this, I do know your top value. Your top value is freedom. It's about the freedom to be you. And anytime you feel that the freedom to be you is pushed beyond your willingness to tolerate, you will rebel. And I think that's what you're seeing all the way around the world right now. In all the countries of the world, people are seeking to find freedom. I talk with people all over the world each and every week. I talk with people in Europe, in Lebanon, in Kuwait. I talk with people in South Africa. I talk with people in Australia. I'm having these conversations, and I want you to know we're really not that different. At the core of all that we are, we really are so much alike. Our desires are similar. Our thinking processes are similar. 
our ability to love, our similar. What we want out of this life is very similar, but we've been taught by the brainwashing that's happening all around us through the media that we're different, that we've got to hate, we've got to not like, we've got to convince people that we have to all be a certain way, act in a certain way, do certain things, think the same way, feel the same way, and that goes against a primal nature that exists within us. And that nature is to be free, to be the uniqueness that we are. You see, prosperity is a spiritual value within us, which is invisible until we demonstrate it. That was a quote by Raymond Charles Barker. And he's one of my favorite, favorite teachers. His works that I've read, I just so get because they're so clear. So really think about that. Prosperity is a spiritual value. It's within us. And it's invisible until we demonstrate it. Until we can bring it out from within. In other words, we have to become it in order to to see it. We can't have abundance or prosperity in any area of our life until we become the person who is prosperous in relationships, in spirituality, in money, in career, in, in, in our jobs. You see, so Lee, you're saying, how do I do? How do we do profitable thinking? Well, the answer I'm going to give you is probably going to surprise you. But it's as simple as thinking about what we want and stop thinking about what we don't want. Yeah, you heard me. It's just that simple. If you start thinking only about what you want and you don't allow thoughts into your life that are contrary to that, you will create a mental energy, a mental atmosphere that surrounds you, that actually radiates from you, your thoughts, words, actions, and feelings will all be aligned toward what you want. And in thinking about it, speaking about it, feeling about it, and acting as if, not only will you be a profitable thinker, you'll be a profitable demonstrator. You will be demonstrating in your life, and you'll look at yourself and say, oh my God, I do create my life experience. Yeah. See, profitable thinking is focus. It's thinking where we use our emotions as we focus with intent and purpose. And this is really, really critical. It's good to think the thoughts we want, but the juice, the power behind the thoughts are our emotions. So when I think about talking to you, I build the idea of how much do I believe this? How can I convey this with my whole heart, my soul, my being? And when I'm doing that, I ask, always ask the question, am I being authentic? Am I being real? And what I found is I really don't want to talk to you about things that I don't feel. I don't really want to talk to you about academic ideas, philosophical ideas. I don't want to talk to you about concepts if I if I'm not juiced, do you know where I'm juiced? Where I've been able to demonstrate, where I've proven to myself that what I'm talking about works for me. Once I discovered that, oh my God, life took on a whole new meaning. And so I was asked this last week to write an introduction to the book that I'll be releasing in the next three months, The Power Within You. And as I wrote the introduction, the things that I focused on were the two biggest events in my life where I used these powers and I had a successful demonstration. Because isn't that the best way to communicate something? Is it an area of life where you've actually proven what you've talked about? In other words, you have walked your talk. And if you're walking your talk 
and you're demonstrating a great life, people will want to know, what, why are you so special? How is this working for you? What do you do? But if you're telling people ideas, you should do this, you should do that, and you're not walking the talk, people will know. But more importantly, you will know because you will not be demonstrating what you're talking about. This law that creates in our lives only responds to our beliefs. And our beliefs are our thoughts, words, actions, and feelings aligned toward a specific result held persistently and consistently, consciously and unconsciously. If any of those things are missing, the demonstration in our life will not happen. Prosperous thinking is creating a self-image in which we are already having, living that which we desire. The simplest I, example I can give you is, let's say you want to buy a convertible. Let's say you think a convertible really good. Okay, picture a day, a beautiful fall day, 70 degrees, sun is out, gentle breeze. Visualize yourself in that convertible. You're going down a country road. The trees are all changing color. The wind is blowing against your face. Your hair is moving with the wind. Feel how good it feels. In your mind, you already have the convertible. Now hold that image. And if it's a true desire, you will have the car. You will find a way. You will take the steps. But you see, before you can really do it, you've got to create that self-image that you already have it. And then it's natural. It's not a surprise. And what I'll tell you right now is to get to that point, there's time involved. Ernest Holmes said when he was talking about a spiritual mind treatment or affirmative prayer, he said there's always an evolution in the demonstration of a prayer. There's a natural evolution. That evolution is our ability to truly build our belief. Our Achieving a prosperous life is dependent on one and only one thing, our mental attitude. I didn't say my wife's mental attitude. I didn't say my children's mental attitude. I didn't say uh, the country's mental attitude. I said your, my mental attitude. That is the single most important thing, is that we take responsibility for our mental attitude. And only that. Because guess what, gang? That's all we can be responsible for. Because we can't change anyone else's. And most of the time, we're not even aware that we can change ours. But if we start working on our mental atmosphere, our mental attitude toward whatever it is we want, we'll change our world. And when people see us changing our world, we'll inspire them to change their world. And that way, that way we can make a difference. You see, a prosperous thinker is, is always aware, focused, creative, and they are always seeking a more expansive life. Think about that. A prosperous thinker is aware. They're aware of their thoughts. They're aware of the direction of their thoughts. They focus their thoughts through their awareness on what they want. And they're always focusing on what? Not going back to the past, going and creating a future. And they're people who realize that life is always in balance. So it's never going to be a one-sided life. It's going to be a two-sided life. So they don't get discouraged while they're on the journey because they understand they're going to be challenged and supported, pleased and displeased. They understand that's the journey of life, but they also understand the key nature of life is that life is expansive and we are here to experience as much of this expansive life 
as we can possibly choose. The key thing is, are you choosing an expansive life or are you choosing a life that's limited? Are you comfortable sitting in your chair, doing nothing, doing the same things, thinking the same things each and every day? Or are you desiring to have an experienced life? So why do we want a more prosperous life? What is it about that? Do you know why we want a more prosperous life? Simply because we can. Why do you want to climb that mountain? Because it's there and I can. Why do I want to have a deeper, more meaningful relationship with my wife of almost 50 years? Because I can. Why do I want to experience more wealth in my life? Because I can. Why do I want to touch the lives of millions of people? Because I can. Why do I want to keep creating greater health in my life? Because I can. What I want you to know is, as much and deeply as I believe this about me, I also believe that you can as well. Because the same power that exists in me exists in you. I believe in you. I see your truth. If you can't see it for yourself, look at it through my eyes. You are perfect. You are infinite. You are whole. And you are powerful. Know that you can. And go create your most magnificent, prosperous life.